Welcome to another great car basic um, training program. So this is part one of the um, LG T8XM um, chipset training. Uh, this is for the Logic Green technology um, ICs and uh, I'll be taking you through a whole series of training over the next uh, few days or weeks. Well, it might take about 10 days. So I'm going to make 18 videos and those 18 videos are going to cover uh, the basics which we're going to start with today through to, to quite complicated um, setups and configurations. So um, let's just um, recap how we where we are with this. Uh, these are the, the boards themselves. Um, the boards are readily available on the internet and they're essentially um, very similar to an AT Amiga 328P. Uh, these are the uh, uh, these are similar but they're not the same and we're going to take you through the configuration and operations of the uh, of these chips um, i'm going to be using a board that looks like the one that's flashing here over here on my right um, it's got a little led on it usb connector and i've got an earth connected to it for um for uh, connectivity which i'll show you very shortly so i'm going to take you through three ways to flash the led and we're going to be using port address, some constants, and then we're going to use some logic. Three methods, but we're going to peel it back as we go through. Um, this is the board. This is the LED we're going to be flashing. It's marked in red. Um, that red uh, LED means that I can do this uh, these three pieces without adding anything onto it, which is great. Uh, what does it look like in, in, in reality? Uh, it's actually... It's this port down here, D13, um, port PB5 port b.5 call it what you like we will be connecting all this blue stuff that i've marked here all this we will be connecting all this into here eventually um and we'll do that over the next um over the next uh, set of training videos so zooming in on what we're going to be doing today it's port b5 i've marked it up here um you could use PB5, that works well as an address, as a constant, but we're going to be using port B5 to, um, to see how that operates. And then we're going to be using a constant. Um, so with, with uh, no more ado, let's have a look at what we're going to be doing out on the lab. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my editor and I'm just going to show you my desktop so that you can get a feel for what's going on on my desktop. Um, so this is the basic editor. Uh, we saw this in the first introduction of the video. We write code in this space here. We get um, compiler and programming messages in here. And I have a series of icons up the top, um, which, I'm, which um, will flash the chip, make the ASM, um, make the hex for you, and then make the hex and program. And you can do the same via these drop downs here. So you've got IDE tools. Great car basic tools and they're the same set of parameters. So what we're going to be doing is editing the code in here and then we'll be pressing this hex button um, to test it. I'll just do that to test for you and you see that dialog box pop up. And then finally, I will be doing this uh, hex and it will then flash the chip for us. So well, you might not see these when I'm actually zoomed in on the editor, but I will be pushing them. and I will make it very clear to you when I'm pressing them. OK. All right. So let's have a look at um, what we've got here. We've got the editor. Um, I'm now zoomed in on it so that we can see it. I'll take you through the, uh, the essentials and you can see that the LED is flashing down there. And, you know, just to prove to you that if I... Um, but I'm going to peel this back for you in a moment. I'm just going to change that to a one second delay. Program it. And whilst it's programmed it, you can see it's clearly flashing at a different rate. Let me just look at my microphone. That was me coughing. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to tell it some um, essential pieces. We have to tell it it's got a chip. And we use that with the hash chip um, command and then tell it what type of chip. And it could be many different types of chips, but we're specifically looking at the LGT 8 f 328 p um, Good practice. Use option explicit. And this will ensure that you create your, your variables, your variable types. We are not using variables, but I always put it in. So these two things are essential. Hash chip, hash option. And then we're into the user program. 
So we know from the little diagram we saw earlier on, it's port B5, and I'm going to tell it to have the direction DIR, direction of the LED, is out. That's, and that's fine. I told it to do that. And now I've got a little do loop. This little do loop will go on forever. You can see by this little link here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn port B5 and set it to 1. It means turn it on. Wait for a period of time. Turn it to put set it to 0 to turn it off. And then I'm going to wait for another time. So we saw that before. I'm just going to put that back to... What was it before? I can't remember. 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to program it. And we will see it program. And out on the LED, you will see it flashing. But how do you know that's 100 milliseconds? Because we don't seem to have done a lot of configuration. Because Great Car Basic in the background sets up oscillators, etc., etc., and ports for you. So let's bring in another piece of equipment just to show you. So what I've got is I've got a little oscilloscope. And I'm going to connect this little oscilloscope to the LED just to show you how this works. This oscilloscope is a, a Gabtronics. It's a very nice little device. Now, you can't see it, but I can by, by bringing it onto the screen. That is the signal that is actually on this display here. Okay. Um, if I turn some of the lights off or lights down, you'd be able to see it, but that's not the purpose. What I want to show you is this square signal. So if I change my source here to 25 milliseconds, I can change the rate of that uh, square wave. The, um, the square wave um, is set at the moment. The, um, the graduations is 0.1 of um, 0.1 seconds per division horizontally. So if I set that to 100 milliseconds, that is 0.1 of a second, we will get um, one square wave per graduation or division of that. We can see that happen. And this is important because I'm going to do something in a moment just to prove it to you of the configuration. And that is spot on. Now, how do you set up the oscilloscope? Oh, the, sorry, the oscillator for the chip. Essentially, you can add in some parameter and a parameter at the end of your chip line. If you add in 16, 32, 8, 4, 1, half, look at the data sheet, but they go from 0.125 to 32 and great car pace it will configure the um, oscillator for you and it will then recalculate all the delays for you so we end up with a signal exactly the same on our on our oscilloscope let me bring in another piece of equipment i always want to this is proof equipment we won't be using this very often this is a um, counter i'm going to connect up a another little wire and i'm going to i'm actually going to tell the chip to put its output signal to um, a counter and that counter uh, will then display the frequency of the chip now I have got this piece of code I'm just going to insert it into here and it's one line of code to tell the the chip to set the oscillator on a particular port and I've just connected up to that and we should get a measurement function telling us that we're actually operating at 16 now let me just show you where that is on the screen it's here if you look at this number here, that's 16.02 um, uh, megahertz. Let me just change that down to one and you'll see that change. So to configure the chip, you need to specify the chip and its frequency. And now it should be at one kilohertz. If I set that to 0.125, it should drop down to 125. Let me just see if it does on the scope. It does. So what we've got is a method of specifying the chip, specifying the frequency, specifying the ports. That is the simplest program. Now we don't need to do this configuration because Great Car Base it will automatically set it to 32 uh, kilohertz, which is the fastest frequency, and that is shown down here on this in the editor. You can see in the editor. It says um, that the program memory is 300 bytes of, of uh, program memory, zero bytes of RAM, and the oscillator is set to 0 0.125 megahertz for that specific chip. If I recompile that, we will see that change to 32, 32 megahertz, which is absolutely spot on.
So what we've learned here is hash chip, hash option explicit, basic do loop, and setting the port on and off, and that we know that when we say do a time, it's going to be valid. So let's have a look at um, another program. This program is going to use constants. Constants make it easier to um, edit and maintain your program. We do that by using the hash define line, and that hash define line and then has a parameter, which is the actual constant name, and then what we want to refer to, in this case, our port B. So in our program here, I've simplified it down. Wherever we see LED0, which is my new constant, it will then replace it with port B5, which means I could change it from B5 to B4, B3 very easily, and the whole program would change. I've also set up a couple of other constants, LED on and LED off. And now my program is a lot simpler. I've got LED 0, which is the LED we're referring to, to turn it off, and then to turn it on with a weight in the middle. And if I compile it up, we should see on the oscilloscope, we should see it on the oscilloscope. Let me just see if we got it here. I'll get rid of that DDS for us. There we go. We're now running at 50 milliseconds. Let me put that back to our single division so that we can have a consistent measure on there. Reprogram it. Job done. The third one I wanted to look at today uses the same principle. It's using the automatic um, frequency for the chip, option explicit, and then I'm going to use the not statement. And there are other ways of turning an LED on and off, but this says toggle the state of the LED because it, it, we're going to say if it's a 1, set it to 0. If it's a 0, set it to 1. And so it's a not statement. Look on the internet for more details on how not works, but this generates extremely simple code. So if I set that to 100 milliseconds, we should see the same square wave. And we do. And again, um, it's very interesting that the um, simplicity of Great Car Basic is shown in these three examples. We have very little to do with respect to the configuration of chips because that's what we've embedded in the compiler. And just to recap, we're also generating ASM assembler that you could actually use in another alternative uh, compiler if you wish. But this is the simplest way to get this particular chipset operating. So what I wanted to show you was the basic operations of the um, LGT8XM um, chipset. I think we've done that. Enjoy.